You know, I don't think I've done this before. I don't think I've done a video about some of the basic stereo miking techniques. So when we talk about doing stereo recording, there are a bunch of pretty commonly used and well-known miking techniques with names that people tend to use in the studio to get a good stereo recording, right? That might be kind of obvious. But today I wanted to talk about a couple of the most common ones, which are XY and AB. So what I have are a couple microphones here. I'm going to use these as props to kind of demonstrate to you how these setups look um, in the real world. And so these are AKG C1000S microphones. So they are small diaphragm condenser mics, so they do require phantom power. They also have a pocket in here for battery if you want to use a battery to power them, um, which can be helpful if you're doing like mobile recording, for example. That can be a huge help, especially, you know, depending on your soundboard and what else you have hooked up to your soundboard. It can be really good for that. Um, these are some of the first microphones that I used professionally. Um, fun fact. I don't know if anyone cares, but um, yeah. And then they are cardioid or hypercardioid. So the first thing that I want to mention is we talk about, you know, coincident miking techniques where they're very close to each other. Um, and when we do that, when we place them very close to each other, it might look like they're touching sometimes, but they're not actually touching. So there's usually, if they're in a position, there's like a tiny, even if it's just like a hair amount of, dist of distance between the two microphones, it's there. You don't want them to be touching each other. So that's very important to note. I've noticed some students that um, did not realize that. So I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that going into this. Okay, so let's start by talking about XY. So XY stereo miking technique, the XY stereo miking technique. So this is one of the most commonly used and commonly taught stereo miking techniques. You might see this very commonly on pieces of equipment, for example. So I have, for example, my Tascam recorder here and many recorders that are similar to this one will have this type of miking technique set up. So you'll notice um, this is you know, a giveaway for what it's gonna look like, right? But um, it's a coincident technique, so they are close to each other without overlapping, and that does help avoid phase issues, right? If they're very close to each other without overlapping, and then you also factor in the polar pattern, um, that can help alleviate any potential phase issues that you might have with a stereo recording. So XY often uses two cardioid mics. Sometimes it uses two figure eight mics. Um, but the traditional way of thinking about it is using two cardioid mics. It's really commonly used with small diaphragm condensers like these ones, right? Um, and basically the idea is that you set it up so that the capsules are 90 degrees relative to each other. So if you look here, if I hold this up and then I hold this one up, that is making a 90 degree angle, right? So 90 degrees. And so usually what we do is we set them up like that. So they're 90 degrees relative to each other. And then we point them at the sound source. So if you are the sound source, I'm going to point them that way. So I keep the 90 degree angle and I keep them really close to each other and I point them at the sound source. And so if you think about it, you have two cardioid mics. One is pointing. Hmm, let me use my task cam here so I can motion. So if you have two cardioid mics, right, one's pointing this way, it's going to pick up stuff this way and it's gonna reject stuff from this end a little bit better, right? Whereas this one is gonna pick up stuff going that way and it's gonna kind of, you know, it's gonna be most sensitive here and it's gonna to start to reject sound going around here. So the areas where these mics are rejecting sound is going to overlap with the areas where the other microphone is picking up sound. And so that's why this technique can be really good for avoiding phase issues. It's a little less likely to get phase issues than other techniques. That combined with the fact that it's they're basically overlapping each other, which is what I already mentioned, right? Um, so this technique, it gives you a nice, good, clean stereo image. Um, it works well for close miking as well. And then the other thing about it is I'm not sure if you would technically still call this XY, but you can increase the angle of the microphone. So instead of doing that on this, I'll show you here. So if you start with them at 90 degrees and you're pointing towards a sound source that I now have on the ceiling, um, you can increase that angle to make it wider. So you can mess with the angle a little bit. Um, technically, XY is at 90 degrees, but you can mess with it a little bit. A lot of these stereo miking techniques, they're kind of just like a starting point. Um, it's a good like frame of reference for how people have found things to sound good before. But, um, you know, like a lot of things with audio and music production, um, I encourage you and I know other people encourage you to explore and learn the rules and then maybe break them a little bit too. So that's something you can do is mess with that angle to see how it feels. And you'll notice that as you increase that angle, it'll feel 
like your stereo width is increasing as well, which makes sense. It's pointing more out to the edges instead of towards the center. Um, and you'll feel that center image decreasing as you increase the angle. Cool, so that's X, Y. Now let's talk about A, B, because I wanted to cover X, Y, and A, B in this video. So A, B is sometimes also called a spaced pair, and you may have seen this technique before. I'm gonna use these as an example, even though typically, um, a lot of times when people do an A-B setup, they're not using cardioid microphones. They're using Omni mics. Um, sometimes they're, they're using cardioid, but I think typically people tend to think about it as an Omni mic type of setup. Um, so basically the idea is that you are, let me adjust these so I can hold them a little bit better, that you are spacing these out and having them just in parallel. So they're pointing the same exact way. They're not at an angle to each other or anything. They're just pointing straight at the sound source. Um, or, you know, the, the region where the sound source is, which is a little more likely, um, but they're basically housed in parallel. So you might have seen them, for example, on a bar and just placed, you know, attached to the bar um, on that type of a housing, that type of a mount system. Um, so that might be one way that you've seen them before. And so the thing about this setup is that it has a little less obvious of a directionality than XY, for example. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it, right? You have two microphones, two microphones that are pointing at a sound source and they're just distanced apart from each other, right? So instead of being at an angle where it's like one's getting stuff over here and focusing on that stuff and the other one's getting stuff over here and focusing on that stuff, you might have two omni mics that are kind of getting everything around it. So it's not as directional in terms of the microphone polar pattern, right? And then also they're not um, pointing at opposite sections. They're kind of pointing at sections that are just next to each other, right? So it has less obvious of a directionality to it, which to me often sounds way, way more realistic, right? So um, you might think that having less obvious of a directionality, less of a stereo spread, so to speak, might be worse, but I... I kind of tend to like this setup a little bit more depending on the circumstance. Um, I feel like with X, Y, it feels very unrealistic to me sometimes. And maybe that's just me. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think. But um, I often find X, Y kind of pissing me off or not feeling quite right. You know, um, I guess pissing me off isn't the right word, but it doesn't feel quite right to me. So there's that. And there are some people that get really into the placement of the microphones with um, this type of a technique. So there are, for example, diagrams that you can use or people have like studied how it affects things depending on your placement. So I'll link to some of that stuff in the description below. And then the thing about this microphone technique is people tend to say that it works better at a distance. And so with this technique, like with you know other microphone techniques that we use as well, if you're farther away from the sound source, you're gonna get more of the room and less of the sound source. I hope that makes sense because you're just farther away from the sound source. The balance is going to change. Um, so if you want more of the room, more of the space, you can back off a little bit. Um, if you want more of the actual sound source, you get closer. And the thing to keep in mind is that with this technique, since it does tend to use omni mics, omni mics don't, um, you know, aren't going to get proximity effect the way a directional mic, like a cardioid mic, is going to get it. So omni mics tend to be better in terms of getting low end reproduction from a distance. So that's why for this type of miking technique, A, B, where they're both in parallel pointing at a sound source, people tend to use them, um, for example, in spaces that sound really good where you want to get more of the space. So, for example, in a church where the acoustics are amazing, you want to get more of that space in your recording. And they also tend to use this technique on groups of instruments where it's like, for example, a choir or a percussion, a group of percussion instruments, something where there's a bunch of there are a bunch of different sound sources like in in a in a field of existence right and so you think about that that makes sense right so what people tend to use is i'll kind of explain it a little better right? hopefully but what people tend to use is the three to one rule and so basically what that says is for example if i have a microphone that's going to be in an ab recording setup and i have a sound source that's one foot away in front of that microphone what i'm going to want to do is I'm gonna to wanna to take this microphone and have it be at least three times that distance. So if this microphone is one foot away from the sound source, the second microphone should be a three feet away from the first microphone. I hope that makes sense. And if you think about it, it makes logical sense, right? If I bring this too close, I'm now not really getting a stereo recording of whatever the sound source is, right? I'm getting um, 
almost the same thing if they're really close together and pointing in the same direction, right? And they're both omni mics or the same type of mic. You know, there's not a lot of advantage to even having the second mic at that point. So if they're too close, then you're you're not really getting a stereo recording. Um, and if it's too far away, then it might feel unrealistic or weird or something like that. And so the idea is that there's like a sweet spot and there's some fluctuation in how you can do it. You can obviously, it doesn't have to be exactly three times, right? But that's the the ish idea, I guess, is, is the way to put it. Um, so, you know, for that reason, you think about all the functionalities of this A-B recording technique. Um, it might make sense now as to why and how it tends to be used. So it tends to be used on these bigger groups of instruments like a choir, like I mentioned. Um, and that's because like if you have this set up and then this one's farther away if you only have one sound source in front of this microphone what good does it to you right that's kind of um this isn't going to be helping you a whole ton besides maybe getting more room right whereas if you have one sound source in front of this microphone and then you have more sound sources in front of this one now we're talking a little bit more now you get a little bit more of um more interest going on between the two microphones um picking up sound so that's the basic idea of the AB recording technique. So that's basically it, the XY technique and the AB miking technique. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you like this type of video. If you wanna see more of this type of video, I could talk about things like uh, midside and Blumline and Decatree and Binaural. There's like a bunch of different ones that we can talk about, ORTF, stuff like that. So let me know if you want more of this type of video. Let me know in the comments below. And other than that, please check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Noise, and it helps keep this channel independent. Um, and we've been hanging out on a Discord server and having a lot of fun and doing a book club and a bunch of other stuff. So um, please feel free to check that out if you feel so inclined. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. And I guess I can put links to these in the description for you. Um, so check that out. If you're interested in any of this stuff and you use my link, you're helping to support my channel and keep it independent and keep this channel from just becoming a giant ad. So I really appreciate that. So um, I will put links in the description for you. Um, I'm losing my voice already. So I'm going to go. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do.